Over 2,000 units of rental public housing under the Advanced Allocation Scheme are completed ahead of schedule. Commissioner of Police Raymond Siu illustrates how surveillance cameras help fight crime. And U.S. Secretary of State says China should not supply materials to assist Russia's war with Ukraine. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The first public rental housing projects under the government's advanced allocation scheme have been built in Tunmun and Chengyi. Over 2,000 units have been completed ahead of schedule. Timothy Lee tells us more. Many Hong Kongers waiting for public housing may move into their new homes in just a few weeks. At Tunmun Zipwang State Construction Site, safety nets have already been taken off from one residential building. The building contains 700 units. Residents can move into their new homes after the building has been inspected and when they receive their occupation permits, which is five months earlier than other buildings in the same public housing estate. But not all housing complexes are situated near supporting infrastructure, such as this one near Wangshu Road and Nanfeng Industrial City. A local district councillor expects a bus route to pass by the state to carry residents to an MTR station. Meanwhile, another two of such residential buildings were constructed at Chengyi's Chengcheng Estate, which will provide over 1,400 units. Residents could move in nine months early. Some residents of the estate said they were pleased with the location, citing its close proximity to public transport and shopping malls. This man said the newly constructed buildings are just two streets away from the wet market and that it is very convenient. But this woman said there are a lack of bus stops in the area. The PRH Advance Allocation Scheme was put forward by Chief Executive John Lee in his first policy address in 2022. This, as Celia Shan, Deputy Director of the Society for Community Organization, or SOCO, urged authorities to speed up the construction of such units. She emphasized that many residents living in subdivided flats are suffering from the sweltering heat and bed bug in the stations. Some residents at Chengyi's Cherencheng Estate said they hope authorities will lower building density in the area for better ventilation. They also called for more bus services to improve public transport. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Applications for light public housing units will begin in the middle of this year at the earliest. This says Secretary for Housing Winnie Ho said authorities will carefully consider requirements for initial rent. Ho says she is confident the three light public housing projects will be completed between 2026 and 2027. The housing complexes will offer some 29,000 units. Eligible applicants will receive notification letters in the middle of the year, with priority given to families with children and elderly people. Commissioner of Police Raymond Siu said the 15 security cameras installed in Mong Kok have helped to bust two crimes in half a month. He also cited overseas examples on how such devices can help to significantly drive down crime rates. Police are planning to install 2,000 surveillance cameras across Hong Kong with 15 security cameras already set up in Mong Kok in mid-April. Commissioner of Police Raymond Siu said the measures are in line with the privacy ordinance. Highlighting their effectiveness in combating crime, Siu said these newly installed cameras helped the police to crack down on two crime cases within half a month. The cases were related to the possession of imitation handguns and robbery. The police chief also cited overseas examples. London has 800,000 security cameras citywide, while Singapore has installed 90,000 cameras currently and aims to ratchet that number up to 200,000 in six years. CCTV Siu says Singaporean residents have called on police to install more security cameras to prevent crimes and the measures have proven effective with an obvious decline in crime rates. As for the large cache of firearms and ammunition seized by the police in Sha Tin, concerns have mounted over the smuggling of weapons into Hong Kong. Siu says since the amendment of the Firearms and Ammunition Ordinance three years ago, the smuggling of spare parts has recorded a significant drop. Over the past eight years, police have cracked down on 15 similar cases through tip-offs. Still called on the public to report any suspected cases through the police anti-terrorism hotline. 
Meanwhile, the police also spotlighted the continued rise in scams. In the first quarter of this year, the city recorded 8,966 scam cases, marking a slight uptake of 0.9 percent year-on-year. Police said that's mainly because of the 55 percent surge in investment scams. The police college held the passing out parade today. Among the 27 new probationary inspectors this year is Edwin Ng, who graduated with a business administration degree and interned at a big four accountancy firm in Hong Kong. The 24-year-old said his father was a police officer. He said working in the financial industry is not as meaningful as working to defend the city's law and order, especially after he experienced the 2019 social unrest. The ceremony also saw the award of Brian Slevin Trophy to probationary inspector Max Al Young and the Shave Cup and the Silver Whistle, which was given to 24-year-old former handball coach Ambrose Yao. The expansion of the Hong Kong Business Aviation Center is set to be complete by the end of next year. The Aviation Center, mainly for chartered or private jets, is located next to the airport's south runway at Czech Labcock and currently handles 8,500 flights per year. It is expected to have the ability to handle 17,000 chartered flights annually. The facility believes Hong Kong has the geographic advantage of being next to the mainland and is just three to four hours away from many popular destinations. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has left China after a three-day trip during which he met with President Xi Jinping and other state leaders. The trip was part of a vow by the two sides to continue communications after the first summit between President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden in Bali in 2022. Nasri Karim has more. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken bids goodbye to China after a three-day trip. Uh. President Xi Jinping met Blinken on Friday in Beijing, one of many meetings for America's top diplomat that included talks with Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Soon after his meeting with Xi, Blinken spoke to reporters about the Russia-Ukraine war and the role of some Chinese companies. Fueling Russia's defense industrial base not only threatens Ukrainian security, it threatens European security. Beijing cannot achieve better relations with Europe while supporting the greatest threat to European security since the end of the Cold War. Blinken said he raised concerns about Beijing's alleged supply of materials, including machine tools and microelectronics, to Moscow that President Vladimir Putin is using to boost Russia's defenses in its war on Ukraine. Washington has imposed sanctions against Chinese firms for doing business with Russia, Iran and North Korea. Foreign Minister Wang Yi also met Blinken. Wang said U.S.-China relations have generally stabilized, but negative factors are still growing. He cited issues such as military aid to Taiwan, U.S. economic sanctions, and accusations of overcapacity by mainland companies. Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said Blinken described U.S.-China relations as the most important bilateral relationship in the world, and it is a shared responsibility by both countries to manage it responsibly. Police Chief Wang Xiaohong, a state councillor and minister of public security, also met Blinken on Friday in Beijing. Wang said the U.S. should take steps to halt the harassment, interrogation and deportation of Chinese students in America. He said the two countries should hold on to the principles of mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation. Nazri Karim, TVB News. In the UK, Buckingham Palace announced that King Charles III will resume his public duties next week after cancer treatment. It comes almost three months after Charles took a break from public appearances to focus on his treatment for an undisclosed type of cancer. The palace says Charles will make a public visit to a cancer treatment center on Tuesday. One of Charles's first major engagements will be hosting a state visit by the emperor and empress of Japan, who will visit the UK in June. The palace didn't provide an update on the king's health or his treatment. A royal expert feels the announcement is significant after his long absence. It's very significant, um, not least because of the speculation about both the King and the Princess of Wales, um, the full extent of their health condition. I suspect something like this doesn't mean that will not mean the speculation goes away. Um, I think there is that feeling that um, it's very difficult to have a functioning monarchy with the head of state away for any considerable length of time. And this felt like a long time.
Welcome back. The Labor Day Golden Week holidays will begin on Wednesday. The government said that all bureau and departments are full steam ahead in carrying out preparations. All border crossing control points will maintain normal opening hours. But some travelers express concerns about crowds during their return trips up north. It's already a bustling site at the Golden Bohemia Square this weekend before the arrival of Labor Day Golden Week. The government expects about 5.9 million people to enter or exit control points during the holidays. 800,000 mainland visitors are expected. While the border crossings extended their hours during this year's Lunar New Year holidays, authorities decided to maintain regular opening hours at all ports during Golden Week. This traveler from Guangzhou expressed concerns about border opening hours because she might bring children and elderly family members to Hong Kong. The government said related departments have prepared a raft of measures, including rostering more frontline staff on duty, with more clearance counters open during Golden Week. Meanwhile, between Tuesday and May 8, concerts will be held at the Central Harborfront event space. To facilitate cross-border travel, the MTR announced it will ramp up train services for seven lines, with the last train of the East Rail Line departing from Admiralty Station to Lawwood Station postponed to 11.32 p.m. Additional special bus routes will be put on as well. The Transport Department has allocated an extra 40 percent quota for cross-border bus operators to increase service frequencies. On the evening of May 1st, a 10-minute fireworks display will be staged at 8 p.m. at Victoria Harbour. This Guangzhou tourist says she would look forward to the show if there aren't long queues in the border crossings with clearer arrangements this time. The Hong Kong Tourism Board said tourists can enjoy the fireworks display not just along the Chim Sha Choi Harbour front. It will be available for viewing along the Hong Hong Waterfront Garden, North Point's East Coast Park and the Wan Chai Waterfront. Overseas, Israel carried out further airstrikes on Rafah in the southern Gaza Strip today, while tanks and armored vehicles massed near the border. One Israeli airstrike hit a house in Rafah's Tel Sultan neighborhood, killing at least six people, including four children. The latest violence came amid increasing international pressure on Israel and Hamas to reach a ceasefire arrangement. Agreement and Hamas has said it is reviewing a new Israeli proposal for a ceasefire, which would stave off a possible Israeli ground offensive into Rafah. Meanwhile, Israel's National Security Minister Itama Ben Gavir was injured in a car accident in which the car flipped. It happened shortly after he visited the scene of a stabbing attack in central Israel in which an Israeli woman was injured. In the state of Arizona, a freight train carrying fuel burst into flames after derailing near the Arizona-New Mexico state line. The interstate highway that serves as a key trucking route was closed after the accident. Initial passersby posted videos and photos on social media of crumpled train cars and black smoke. No injuries were reported so far. Fish taken to space by China's Shenzhou 18 crew are doing well in a tank inside the space station. The new crew arrived at the space station yesterday and brought the aquatic creatures with them. Some have called the fish the extra crew member. The four zebra fish were swimming in a tank in space. They are being monitored to see how they behave as part of an experiment. The fish were transferred to the lab module on Tiangong with a plan to create a self-cycling ecosystem with goldfish algae. Japanese astronauts took zebra fish to the International Space Station 12 years ago. The Soviets also sent the same type of fish into orbit in 1976. They noted the fish modified their behavior in microgravity. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.